ESPN 94.1 FM at 8 and 930 present The Drive. Brought to you by Huntington Federal Savings Bank. Local then, local now. Never FDIC. Let's see if I remember how to do this. It is Friday! Yeah, I remember how to do this. It is Friday, October 9th. Your drive begins now on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. I'm your host, Paul Swan. You can join the program by calling the Miller Lite phone line at 877-420-TALK. That is 877-420-8255. Miller Lite, hold true, great taste. Only 96 calories. It is the original light beer. Yeah, we've had a couple weeks off. Lots of afternoon baseball. I mean, that was fun. For two weeks near two weeks, every day we had a multitude of games just to look forward to. And, of course, as the playoffs continue and we're running out of teams, as we're getting closer to the championship series and, of course, the World Series itself, you know, we'll have more evening baseball. But it was fun for the last couple of weeks just to have all of that baseball. And we still have got the NFL, and we don't know what's going on there because, you know, we're moving games around now. So, uh, just follow us on Twitter. That's going to be the best place. When we have solid information, follow us on Twitter, ESPN94.1. On Twitter, that's going to be the best place for you to can, kind of keep up on what we're doing. But we've got a show for you today, as we always try to. I've got David Kahn joining me from the West Virginia Power because uh, there's an event going on at the ballpark on Saturday. So if you're not going to the Marshall game or you're not looking forward to the Marshall game because, well, you're tuned into this show and you're not a Marshall fan, first and foremost, there are people who tune into the show, not Marshall fans. We've got other things for you. So David Kahn will tell us about that. Also, uh, Huntington High in action tonight right here on ESPN 94.1. Taking on Woodrow Wilson and Woodrow Woodrum will join us on the program. We'll talk to him a little bit later on for a preview of that one. And uh, we're going to also talk to Matt Perry. He'll have the call of Spring Valley at Fairmont Senior. That's coming up tonight over on our sister station, 92.7 and 98.5 The Planet. So we've got a lot of high school football action. We're going to get into all of that later on. Of course, tomorrow, Marshall taking on Western Kentucky. I know some of you call it the moonshine throwdown. I, I'm i not on board with it yet, but I'm not going to fight you on it. I just don't know where the moonshine's coming from here on the Kentucky side. I mean, I, Kentucky bourbon. Now, there's bourbon in Kentucky. I mean, okay, you want to go with moonshine in West Virginia, that's fine, but I'm thinking more bourbon in Kentucky. If I'm wrong and you can tell me why, there's plenty of moonshine in Kentucky. You know, maybe just maybe I'll warm up to it a little bit more. But we're going to preview this one in detail tomorrow. That'll come up at 4.30. And Bill Cornwell is going to join me. He'll be coming live from Bowling Green, Kentucky. Uh, we're going to hear from players, coaches. Uh, we'll have a preview of what's happening in Conference USA. And let me tell you, uh, we're losing games right and left. The preview in Conference USA changes every day. For example, FAU, the game at Southern Miss postponed because we've got more COVID-19 concerns. I mean, FAU was just starting to um, get at it, and now COVID-19 strikes again, 2020 strikes again. This is less than one week after their first game of the season against Charlotte, and after their first four games were postponed because of scheduling conflicts with COVID. The road game against Southern Miss postponed because of another coronavirus outbreak. Several assistant coaches missed the trip to Mississippi for the game after at least one tested positive for COVID-19. That is according to OwlAccess.com. Not looking good here on several fronts. That's why every time Marshall can take the field, you feel fortunate that you got to that point. And you hope that Marshall can take the field against Louisiana Tech. You hope that on October 24th that you've got a game against FAU because, again, there have been so many gaps in the schedule. Marshall's had to wait almost three weeks 
Last time Marshall played was on September 19th, defeats Appalachian State 17-7, and then we've been waiting to see Marshall football again. So the next time the Thundering Herd plays tomorrow, then the 17th, then you hope with FAU everything is resolved by the 24th for that game, or does it get rescheduled? October 30th, you're at FIU. You've got November 7th off unless something gets scheduled into that position. And then you have two games at home, Middle Tennessee and Charlotte. And then you see what happens from there. Conference USA Championship game possibility. Who knows? If Marshall goes undefeated or stays atop of Conference USA, even with a loss, I see, I don't know what it's going to take because you've got so many teams, so many different fluctuating schedules, what's it going to take? You're going to look at this and go, okay, we're going to go by percentage, or if, say, a team is undefeated, we'll use Marshall as hopefully the example. If Marshall's undefeated throughout conference play, well, they're undefeated. Schedule them as a champion. If you look at the schedule and say, okay, it doesn't matter what a, a if they have to schedule a game and they're undefeated, okay, it doesn't matter. A loss there really would knock them out of the championship game, so you do you play that game. There will be so many questions, I'm sure, as we get closer to the finish line. And it's been interesting to see college football and the NFL struggle, and some levels struggle with trying to get these games going. At the same time, Marshall University – only victimized by the other team so far, as far as scheduling conflicts. I mean, Marshall has not been the reason why a game can't be played. Not yet, anyway. And so that's definitely a tribute to what Marshall's been able to do, and with fans. I mean, WVU's finally getting to have fans come into the stadium, and if Marshall can have fans, why couldn't WVU? What's the difference? I know the color-coded map showed red, and I know color-coded map changes on a daily basis, but if you're allowing fans in the stadium, at any stadium, I think you could have that almost across the board. So WVU finally getting to have fans, that's going to be probably a boost for morale for that program as well. Just the fact that you'll finally get to see some fans marshal going to be on the road for a couple of weeks, so you'll see some limited fans, maybe depending on what situations change, what happens here. Tomorrow it's going to be a wet day, so the fans are going to be wet. That's the weather forecast. But you don't know what you're going to see at Louisiana Tech. You don't know what you're going to see at FIU. More than likely you'll have fans for the game on the 24th. If it's played, you'll have game, you'll have a fan. Probably that's going to be, unless something drastic happens, you have a game, you're going to have fans here, at least in Huntington. All right, we're going to turn our attention to what's happening for the rest of the day. I've got David Kahn. He's coming up. We're going to talk a little bit about what's happening with Appalachian Power Park. And later on, Woody Woodrum's going to join me. We'll talk to Matt Perry. He'll join me. We'll take your tweets at Paul Swan. Facebook, The Drive with Paul Swan. It's all when we continue with today's edition of The Drive presented by Huntington Federal Savings Bank on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. You're listening to The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. You know, something concerned me the other day. I haven't had a show in about two weeks because of baseball. We've talked about that. And... I got an email from David Kahn from the West Virginia Power. There's a big event happening, and I'm thinking, I wonder if David is going to be upset with me because I haven't had a show in two weeks to talk about this. And lo and behold, we have a show today. So the first person I got on the phone was Mr. Kahn. He is with us now uh, in transit. I I don't know where. He's in parts unknown because um, he's got to get back here for (laughs) Good thing you got that. Parts unknown, David Kahn, as we get ready for the ball. The okay, the I'm trying to say this is a straight face. The ballpark brawl presented by IWA East Coast, David Kahn, uh, the Vince McMahon of um, of minor league baseball joins us. Yes, uh, thank you, Paul. Great to be with you, as always. Uh, yes, I am in parts unknown of North Carolina. 
uh, currently making my way through the fall foliage trees uh, to get back to West Virginia for, uh, and you got you got to use your your wrestler MC voice. So ball, ball, ball! tomorrow night at seven o'clock. That's my wrestler voice. That's your wrestler voice. That's my wrestler voice. I mean, that's. See, his he's in parts unknown. His phone also might be in parts unknown. There he is. I'm here. Sorry, With, I, I am driving through the mountains, but I'm here. That's, that's okay. Um, actually, um, I wish all wrestling events were called like they are in the U, uh, UFC. Fighting. You can't hear that 15 times. <laughs> Fighting on the red what? corner. <laughs> So let's talk about this. This is um, this is coming up tomorrow. This is an alternative to those who um, maybe can't get to a college football game, don't want to go to a college football game, and it's just a great family event. One and all can come. It's at the ballpark, and everyone's going to social distance as you have IWA East Coast Wrestling. Yes. Uh, that is correct, and, and one of the reasons we did it uh, this weekend is because West Virginia is on a bye, Marshall is on the road, so it made a lot of sense to do it this weekend. Um, but yeah, so we're going to have uh, a ton of wrestlers, there's eight different matchups that are going to go on throughout the night, we're going to have a DJ, we're going to have an MC, there's concessions, there's drinks, uh, there's, you know, it, it's going to be live. There's, we're, we're literally building a ring on the field tomorrow morning. It's going to be constructed. Uh, it's going to be shown on the video board. It's going to be a really, really cool event, something we haven't done solely by itself in a long, long time, and we are very, very excited about it. Uh, one thing we do want to mention uh, is that uh, masks are required for everyone ages 2 and up. Uh, everyone entering the facility must wear a mask, and you have to wear a mask unless you are seated with your immediate group that you came with or you're eating. If you're walking around, if you're at the concession line, in the restroom line, just standing on the concourse, you have to wear a mask if you, unless you are seated in your seat. The good news, I think, for the most part, is most people at these events understand this is sort of the price of a mission. And to keep having events like this, um, I don't probably anticipate any problem, but that's good to remind people, hey, no matter what, you're outside, still you got to wear a mask. Yeah, absolutely. We we completely agree as well. Um, But, yeah, other than that, it's going to be a fantastic event. Um, Online ticket sales, the last day to get your online tickets is today. Uh, they're $25 field level seats, $10 general admission, uh, but they are doing tickets at the gate tomorrow. So if you don't get your tickets today, you can walk up and buy your tickets tomorrow, same prices, and the event is rain or shine. We know there's rain in the forecast tomorrow. We promise you folks, rain or shine, the event is happening. One thing you didn't tell me, or I would have called in sick for tomorrow for our pregame. I would have just called in sick. Juventud Guerrera yeah. is on the card. You didn't tell me that. Juventud Guerrera. I, I like to surprise you. Well, you did. I would have called off sick <laughs> for that. I mean, seriously, I would have called off sick. I mean, I can't now. They, they know I'm not. but Or they would know where to find me still. I mean, Juventud Guerrera, he's, he's older than you, isn't he? Uh, yes. Way I older. So. I mean, how old is he? I mean, he he was around probably when you were a youngster uh, ringside uh, with your um, with your first broadcaster's kid, your little first, you know, Mr. Uh, Fisher Price. <laughs> you know, they actually have a Fisher Price uh, Mr. DJ set. You were probably calling the wrestling match as you saw it, you know, as a little uh, a little little tiny con calling that. That's how long he's been around. Yeah, I mean, probably, sure. I, I definitely had a Fisher Price uh, DJ set. Um, you know, broadcasting's been in the blood for a while, so def- definitely had that little little uh, walk and talk microphone. Um, but uh, but yeah, I mean, look, we we, we got we, we broke out the best that we could. Uh, you know, with uh, with availability and everything that we had going on, uh, we, we we made sure we wanted to get some some big names. 
uh, to come to the ballpark, and we're really excited about the cards that we have. I don't know that much, honestly, about IWA East Coast, but uh, just looking at their Facebook page and kind of getting an idea of, of what this is about, uh, this is going to be a sort of old-school wrestling but still with a fresh face. Um, as wrestling has taken many forms over the years, uh, uh, this looks like it's a, a young group and you still get that old-school feel to it. Right. That's exactly what they try and portray and what we're trying to do as well. Um, you know, they're based out of Nitro. They've done plenty of these shows. They're very popular in West Virginia. Uh, we kind of were talking to And then when COVID cases got a little better, uh, we started really planning it. And, we, you know, I told you why we pegged this date um, to, to, you know, give maximum amount of people a chance to come out and enjoy it with nothing else going on. Um, so we're, uh, we're very excited about it. Um, you know, we, we can't wait for... Just we can't wait for this event to happen because you know this is something that we don't want to be a one-time thing. We just want to see how it goes now, so that in the future we can keep doing it and make it even bigger and better. David Kahn's joining me of the West Virginia Power, of course, one of his many duties. But um, that's where you're at this weekend as the Mountaineers are off and thundering herd on the road. So you're taking definitely advantage of the uh, the open date here. Are we going to see any more events at the ballpark? Uh, is this um, if this is successful, obviously you want to have this again, but are you looking to have more events like this because of the advantage that Appalachian Power Park offers you being an open-air venue? I mean, sure, it's going to be uh, pretty cold here eventually, but while you still have good weather, you're going to try to do more with it? We're, we're certainly exploring new events. Nothing that we can announce just yet, but we are certainly exploring more events. Uh, we want to do as much as we can while the weather allows uh, but we, we do have to be mindful of the restrictions in our county, in our city, in our state. Uh, we, you know, we're following the governor's guidelines uh, for COVID-19. And, uh, you know, we, we, are, uh, we are absolutely doing as, as much as we can uh, to continue to have more events out of the ballpark and just give our community something to enjoy uh, and be a part of because we know that there's not a whole lot of that going on right now. Uh, obviously, college football is back, and that's great. Uh, but fans necessarily aren't allowed into stands or at the limited capacity, so that's tough. Uh, but we're, uh, you know, we're we're excited that we can provide this atmosphere and this event tomorrow, uh, and certainly looking to do as much as we can moving forward. Now, the mask issue is is well covered ground, but if someone by chance forgets a mask. Uh, will there be masks available for purchase? Will you have you know, throwaway masks? Uh, or are you just encouraging everyone, hey, you better have your mask because you won't get one at the ballpark? We, we are encouraging everyone to bring their own mask, of course. Uh, I do believe that we will have, and I think IWA East Coast actually uh, will either be providing or selling at a very reasonable price uh, masks for people who don't have their own. Um, or you can't, or you can't have one. I, I believe those will be provided by IWA East Coast. Um, we certainly don't want to turn anyone away, but uh, they will have to have a mask to enter the facility for sure. But I, I believe that IWA East Coast will provide masks for those who don't have them. Now, is this being stream taped anywhere, or is this just basically a house show? You better be here if you want to see it. Yeah, so it's a house show. Uh, it will not be live streamed anywhere. Uh, we are recording it at IWA East Coast. One of their packages, uh, they do sell DVD copies of their events. Uh, so they will be getting a taped copy of this event, and they will be selling a DVD of it. But we can guarantee you the DVD will be nothing like being there in person. I'm just kind of curious. Uh, will you be involved in any ring action? Uh, will you be interfering in any matches? Uh, are, are you going to be... Uh, guest managing, guest refereeing, you know, any any David Kahn activity. Now, why would I spoil that for you? I just want to know, man. I just want to know. I mean that. <laughs> I just I just want to know because I have a feeling that there might be a run in. I don't know. Knowing you, there might be a run in, or you might be walking down. You might be a manager type. I don't know. I'll say this. It's been discussed. Okay, fair enough. Uh, I was involved in a professional. I was involved in a professional wrestling match uh, years ago. I had to um, 
I had to keep a, a valet, a, a ringside manager, instigator, whatever you want to call him. I had to keep him at bay. Uh, so they handcuffed him to me. Oh. Yeah. I, I've done this before. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's not as easy as it looks. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'll keep that in mind. You might, you might have will, to, uh, that might be a stipulation. You, to prevent er- interference, you might have to be handcuffed to somebody. <laughs> well, uh, look, uh, all, all possibilities are on the table. That's all I'll say. Okay. David Kahn's joining us here uh, from the West Virginia Power. And, of course, uh, the Power uh, are off tomorrow because, well, there's no uh, baseball uh, currently going on. And so um, we've got wrestling at the ballpark. Just as good. Almost yeah. as good. Just as good. Almost Almost is good. Almost is the right word. Uh, obviously, we're still reeling from no season, um, and we are we are still, you know, working on everything to do with the whole minor league contraction issue going on and everything with that. Our, our focus is still firmly planted on that and, and making sure that we're still around uh, in future years. But you know, why not take a little veer to the right uh, and shift to uh, shift to the ring from the field. I like it. Uh, you know, the the next pay-per-view, the IWA um, ballpark bash, this could be almost like the Great American Bash. Do you remember those events? Are you too young? And you remember those those days? of? Uh... So, so, you know, I'm, I, I am not the biggest wrestling nut, uh, so I'm going to say no. I mean, I know about pay-per-view wrestling for okay. sure, but, but I am not the biggest wrestling guru, so... To say I know about the specific event or series that you're talking about, I, I'd be lying. Um, it's sort of similar to what you got going on. The Great American Bash okay. was sort of like a, a summer event, and uh, this was back in the NWA WCW days, but uh, more or less um, Dusty Rhodes. And uh, that um, that run of wrestling, and they would have these events at ballparks. So this is obviously going to be better but it, you know, you have you know you have seen events like this before at the ballpark so uh this is obviously going to be maybe reminiscent of that and that's what makes it kind of fun yeah absolutely i mean we we wanted the nostalgia a little bit um that's kind of the vibe that iwa east coast gives off as well so we wanted some nostalgia uh we wanted some some new uh, new blood in the ring when we talked to the, the talent management about who we could get. You know, we wanted a mix of old and new. Some some names you know, some names you may not, but are up and comers. Um, and you know, we are uh, we're just extremely excited about who we got and, and the fact that we can you know work with the, with a great company and, and put on what's going to be a really fun and uh, exciting event and something that in 2020, you know, with everything that's been canceled. Uh, you know, we're excited to be able to put this on and, and have our fans be able to come out and enjoy it. Uh, you know, say that I was at this event, you know, during a global pandemic. David Kahn, my guest, he is of the West Virginia Power tomorrow. Maybe a manager, uh, maybe a special addition to a match. You you have to find out. You have to go to this event. And, of course, uh, go to WVPower.com for more details. Uh, very affordable. This is not a, a very pricey event. Uh, field level seats are $25 each. General admission seats, just $10 each. And uh, uh, you've got everything linked up. But if you go to IWAEastCoast.ECWID.com, um, you can get information there. Just just go to WVPower.com. It's quicker. Yeah, I mean, you can go to you can go to our website. You can go to their website. Um, and basically, go to our social media and our social media channels on Facebook and Twitter have uh, all the information. Uh, there's posts about it. Go to IWA East Coast on Facebook or Twitter. They've got all the information. Uh, it, it's out there. It's available. Uh, we're we're thrilled to be doing it. Uh, and, and look, Paul, if for some reason I drop an RKO out of nowhere, uh, you'll know. That's what I'm afraid of, and I'm, I'm not talking about at the match. I'm, I'm, I might just turn around tomorrow during the pregame, and there you are, RKO. <laughs> I, Maybe. I, you I, I'm just going to tell you right now, I'm, I'm at Roosters tomorrow, so I'm going to be wide open. It could come. I'm going to be wide open. Okay. Yeah. I was going to say, if you want to host your pregame show from Appalachian Power Park, I mean, you're more than welcome. Um. 
Sorry, previous obligation at Roosters. Sorry, um, I mean, no, I know. I yeah, know, I know. They, I know. um, I, I can't get. I mean, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I know the food is good at the ballpark, but I can't get the uh, the salads uh, and uh, the the chicken wings. I can't at Roosters. Uh, I can't. Yeah, I'm sorry. No. Um, look, look, I understand. It, yeah. It's fine. You, you got to fulfill your you got to fulfill your sponsorship contract. I get it. I understand. And plus, uh, again, um, I'm not going to leave myself open and susceptible to an RKO from David Kahn because. Ah, oh, see, that was that was the goal, but all right, uh, whatever. Oh, I understand, no, completely, because you know, any time I could drop you with a stoner, and it would be over. Oh, you want to stone cold me? Okay, all right, all right. I mean, he he does stun he does stun his friends and enemies alike. I mean, he stunned Santa Claus one time, so don't don't think it can't come from anywhere. I mean, be careful. I'll just pull a chair out from under the ring, and it's over. Okay, all right. That's how it's gonna be. Tables, letters, and chairs. Let's go. I think the people would pay to see that. <laughs> right. Oh, I mean, that uh, maybe. Same people that subscribe to our podcast. That's right. And you know what? Our podcast is totally free. <laughs> That's true. No Patreon. <laughs> no Patreon. Yeah, you, you, you shot that down. So, okay, I was going to try to cash in on this. But, no, okay. Um, Swan and Con will return. David Con on the road, so let's get him off the phone so it doesn't wreck. David Con, our guest from the West Virginia Power, wrestling tomorrow at the ballpark. The ballpark brawl presented by IWA East Coast. Have fun tomorrow, man. Have fun. Thank you. You too. Enjoy your roosters. I'll, I will. David Con with us. Quick timeout. We continue on here. ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. Now, back to The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Presented by Huntington Federal Savings Bank, welcome back to today's edition of The Drive for Friday, October 9th. It's like we've been gone for two weeks. (laughs) Woody Woodrum with me on the program now. I mean, look, we're playing all the hits today. David Kahn was on. Uh, We've got you coming up now. Uh, I mean, uh, seriously. You're gone two weeks. You need to come back to uh, to familiar voices, and that's why you're here. And oh, oh, by the way, we have Huntington High at Woodrow Wilson tonight. So Woodrow Woodrum, tell me about Huntington at Woodrow Wilson. Well, you know, it's interesting that the Highlanders had a weekend off last week, and so did the herd. I can't remember the last October weekend I was off without a game to work in my life. So that was fun, but. Uh, you know, you've got a one and three Beckley team that picked up their last, their first win of the year against an 0 and five. Pikeview is a double A team who's not very good, and Beckley had to overcome six turnovers in the game to get the win. <laughs> so it, it's not been easy for them. They have 11 turnovers in all this year, and Huntington is plus one. They've made six turnovers, but they've grabbed seven from the opponent. So. That's probably going to be what we keep an eye on tonight in this game. Uh, I know this team, like Hurricane, like Parkersburg, had not beaten Huntington in quite a while. Uh, of course, Hurricane has won two in a row now after not beating the team in the Billy Seals era. Parkersburg got their first win in 11 games against the team two weeks ago. And Beckley's lost nine straight to uh, to Huntington, so... You got to think they're going to be uh, flying high, uh, flying eagles here at Van Meter Stadium. You know, a real historic stadium. Uh, Coach Van Meter, one of the greats of sports in West Virginia history, lots of football and even more basketball championships under him. But, you know, Huntington had a week off, so, and it was an odd week off, Paul, because Coach Billy Seals, the head coach, was also quarantined for uh, a student with COVID. So he had to take 10 days off. He didn't even get back to practice to Wednesday this week. was his uh, Well, that was actually his last day. And then Thursday he was there. And he'll talk to us a little bit later in the pregame. But he, uh, you know, it was weird for him. But they decided to go last week and hit a little bit. Work on themselves. Do, try to improve the things that they're doing wrong. Make them do them right. So I hope that's been a beneficial week. The kids still seem to have it. Great attitude. You're going to hear from uh, Noah Waynick at halftime, and they're they're excited. I mean, they still think they're going to have victory number one tonight, and then move on. Now, the odd thing is, is uh, Coach Seals and Bruce Senior, the AD out there at Huntington, have already done some work on the schedule. And right now, they've got lined up uh, next week Winfield, 
at the uh, old home days for Woody Woodrum. And then Greenbrier East, uh, the trip to Bridgeport, still on. They haven't had any COVID action in their county so far. That would uh, impede them. And then uh, possibly Riverside. But, of course, Riverside played Wednesday night. And Thursday, they closed the school because of COVID, plus the three elementaries were closed up for, you know, Thursday and Friday this week. So you never know how the schedule's going to change. I was told it's quite possible if Pinal County is not able to make a trip by then that the Flying Eagles may make it a second appearance with the uh, Highlanders up on the uh, hilltop there in Huntington. So that would be kind of interesting to see. Got to do what you got to do because, after all, you're running out of dates and you're not going to have an extension of the season. You don't know if you'll get a full schedule. Of course, the WVSSAC is trying to determine, and they'll release their guidelines, what actually will qualify you for the postseason because that's the intent to have a full-fledged postseason and play for a championship in some form and fashion. Yeah, and, you know, they're going minimum of six games is what they're saying to be eligible, and then on top of that, you've also got, uh, you know, you got Huntington, it looks like they'll play almost full schedule if they go ahead with that group, and, you know, obviously they got to put some wins together, but if they could win four games, you know, I think four and six probably get you in this year, and, you know, the one thing, and you're going to hear Coach Seals talk about this in the pregame show, he just doesn't like the idea of what Canal County is doing, trying to play catch-up, playing on you know, Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday, and then again on Friday. And they're doing that for three weeks. And that seems like that's asking an awful lot out of, you know, 15, 16, 17-year-old youngsters to play twice a week. I mean, hardly anybody hits them in, in practice anymore. Not every day. You know, when you got an open week or something, you might get a little bit alive. But most people are so worried about injuries and, and the depth that they can't do that. So I don't know. I mean, I think two games a week, for three weeks or so, they're looking at maybe through October 19th. I think that's an awful lot to ask out of your kids. Yeah, unlike basketball or even hockey or some of yeah. the other contact sports, um, football is a collision sport every single play. And um, I know these kids are young and they'll bounce back, but uh, you hate to put them through the stress of two games a week. Well, I, I think the thing you worry about most, Paul, is you know by that third week, by that sixth game in three weeks, they're going to be a little tired. And the tired players, that often leads to injury. They don't quite get off the ball as fast. They don't get the spot they're supposed to be. They might be late in their pool or hitting the hole, and then somebody gets hurt. And, you know, anybody can be hurt, but it, it always seems like when you've got players who are tired and run down, and, and quite frankly, most of the schools don't have the depth to have certain players on offense, certain players on defense. Everybody has two-way players. So those kids are never coming out. They're on kickoff. They're on kickoff return. They're on punt, punt return, offense and defense. I mean, Billy Seals probably has at least 20 kids that go like that. And he just and, – and I feel it's an awful lot to ask out of your kids. It's just high school football, and I know it's important to people. We didn't drive two and a half hours through a traffic jam and a wreck and some. Somebody stuck a 13-foot truck under a 12-foot overpass or something and really held up the drive today. But, you know, you've got to remember, they are 15, 16, 17. You know, for most of them, this might be the last games they ever play if they're seniors, and you want to get the games in. But I think we got to be smart about it. I mean, we heard from Marshall officials today that the conference is looking at pushing their championship back so teams can maybe get in another game that first week of December, maybe Marshall can finally play East Carolina in the first or second week of December and, and then move the championship like the Big Ten and the, and some of the other leagues have done to like December 19th. And, you know, if that pushes a couple of bowl bids back a few days, well, so be it. You know, it, it's just you can't ask too much out of these kids. You know, nobody in the NFL likes playing Sunday and then on a Thursday. You know, you get 10 days off incredibly hard on the NFL players. Well, these aren't NFL players. These are kids, and you know you want to make sure they're safe, taken care of, most of all. 
Woody Woodrum joining us. The broadcast coming up tonight, 7 o'clock. It's going to be Huntington at Woodrow Wilson. You'll be there. Nick Verzellini will be there as well. So uh, you guys will have a fun call. And, of course, you can listen to that right here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. Go to our website for the stream at wrvc.com. If you've got the Alexa app, just tell Alexa to play ESPN 94.1. Wherever you are, we've got the game for you. And um, the only place we don't have it for you is on Facebook. Sorry. Yeah, sorry about that tonight. You know, it's always an honor to come down here, though. Like I say, Van Meter Stadium is the big sign in the end zone. And then we're working in the Gene Morehouse press box. And, you know, that means a lot to all Marshall people. Gene Morehouse, who left Beckley, had been the voice of the Flying Eagles down here and a radio guy known all over the state, came to Marshall to work two years as the SID and radio guy. That happened a lot back in the old days. <laughs> I can't imagine that now, but in the old days, a lot of SIDs did radio. And Hey, 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 hey yeah. Jason Courier does radio. Yeah, well, that's true. He so, does. So there you go. Jason Courier yeah, does so, radio. That's what I mean. It, it It is rare these days, but it was not so rare. And, of course, the father, Keith Morehouse, and the, the whole Morehouse clan, you know, misses him terribly to this day. And 50th anniversary coming up on the crash next month, which is really hard to believe, Paul. Uh, you know, I was just a kid of 14, but even even just living in our new home in Winfield, you know, I got the impact of what that was all about. And, you know, it's been a pleasure to get to know Keith and, and maybe get to know his dad a little bit through Keith and, you know, we're working in his stadium the night in his press box, and that, that means a lot to our crew, too. Woody Woodrum, Huntington High, taking on Woodrow Wilson tonight. I'll talk to you uh, probably tomorrow, um, Monday. I, I don't know. I'll talk to you. Yeah, I know you got a little work to do tomorrow as the herd goes down to Western Kentucky looking to go 3-0, and so that should be fun show tomorrow at Roosters or so. Yep, Roosters. I'll be out on the porch hanging out, um, getting my— Free meals for Woody Woodrum? Did I hear that was maybe in the plans there? Uh, um, the, what are your connections breaking up? I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what's wrong with this connection. Stop! <laughs> up, oh, 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 There's Woody Woodrum. He's gone. Uh, quick timeout. We come back. We'll try to make time for Matt Perry. He uh, brings up the rear when we continue. ESPN ninety four point one and AM nine thirty. Buckle up. Paul Swan has the wheel on the drive. ESPN ninety four point one FM and AM nine thirty. I was worried we might have to Matt Damon, our next guest, uh, Spring Valley in action tonight, taking on Fairmont Senior. Matt Perry joins us. Um, you'll have to do something that no one else on the show can do today. That's be concise. I'm up to the challenge. We're 63 minutes from kickoff here at East West Stadium in wonderful Fairmont. Uh, one of the coolest stadiums I've ever called a game from. Uh, built in 1938. Uh, by the WPA, so all you history nerds, that was the the, the New Deal. And so uh, we're enjoying our trip up here, up 79 today, Paul. Uh, Spring Valley obviously coming off that huge victory over Martinsburg. They finally got the monkey off their back. Fairmont Senior is 2-2 and on the year, coming off a uh, convincing victory over the Generals from Winfield. Um, It's going to be the same story that we say weekly with Spring Valley. Spring Valley is going to try to control the clock, run, keep the ball on the ground, throw when they have to, and it'll be on Fairmont Senior to uh, force turnovers and try to pull this upset off. Okay, you didn't have to be that concise. Very good, by the way. But that, that I think I appreciate it. Yeah, we still have time left. That was pretty concise. <laughs> uh, how tough has it been? Just so weekly, trying to okay, are we playing or are we not playing? Uh, you know, uh, just from an outsider's view, looking in, I looked at Mike on the drive up here, and I said I would not want to be a coach right now during the era of COVID. You know, constantly on edge if you're going to have a game, looking at the magical map that the State Department puts out every Saturday in the evening. Um, it, it's it's just a headache. And so with Spring Valley being at home for two weeks, you're worried about the rust. You're worried about, uh, you know, um, a trap game. You know, it's a long drive up here. Next week is the showdown with Cabell Midland. And so you have to be all hands on deck against Fairmont tonight. And, you know, and it, it's kind of like a first game of the year feel because there's been such a layoff that, like, you're worried about silly penalties, those types of offsides and false starts that you see on the first game of the year. Matt Perry joining us, of course, coming up tonight. Spring Valley taking on Fairmont Senior. We'll have that game for you over on our sister station. You know you know the station. If you don't, it's 92.7 and 98.5 The Planet. And then next week we await. We await the map. Again, we await the map, and I don't even pretend to understand the colors anymore. All I know is, if you want a big showdown in AAA next week, 
be praying that Cabell County and Wayne County are yellow or better because that will mean that Spring Valley will be traveling to the castle to take on the Knights from Cabell Midland. Okay. If Cabell and Wayne County are both gold, the game can happen. The game can happen. Yes, you're correct. If for some reason they both move to gold, yes. Gold, yellow, or green, the game happens. That is correct. But if uh, any team's orange, it's off for sure. I'll just hope for yellow. Let's just go for yellow. I mean, I want green. But give me yellow. That'll be fine. I want green as well. I, you know, I hope everybody's healthy out there. I hope everybody's staying safe. Um, you know, we would all love to see green across all 55 counties. But for our selfish football uh, wants, we want to see yellow. Uh, we want to see yellow and Cabell and Wayne are better. That's what we want to see. And the only way to get to that is um, wear a mask. Well, there are other ways, but wear a mask. Yeah, and get your testing if you're in Wayne County. The more tests you get, the better your numbers look. And so uh, they actually had free testing out of Spring Valley High School last week. All right, we're out of time, um, man. I got like three seconds. I will be listening tonight. We'll talk to you on Saturday for Marshall Football. WRBC Huntington, W227BS Huntington, your flagship home of the Marshall Thundering Herd and The Drive with Paul Swan, ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930.